With the prevalence of the cloud, we oftentimes want to store our static files in the cloud. We also might want to store our uploads and things of that nature in the cloud as well. Unfortunately, it's not always straightforward how we can do this, but with a package called Django Storages, it's a matter of changing your storage back in and poof, everything magically works. In this episode, we're going to go over how to configure and use Django Storages to upload static files and uploads to Amazon S3. And we're also going to use Bodo as our upload library. So the first thing that we need to actually do is we need to install Django Storages. And then we also need to install Bodo. And then after that, let's take a quick tour of our application. The first thing we do is if we look in the models, we have an image and it's set to an image field. And we're going to upload it to the IMG folder. We have a title and a description, and these are a normal part. The next thing that we can look at is we can look at our form, which is a model form that has the model of image. Again, normal Django, nothing custom. Finally, let's go ahead and look at our template. If you'll look, you'll see the form action, the method for post, and the encode type is a multi-part form data. We have our CSRF token, and we just print out form.asp. Again, all very generic Django. So with that in mind, let's actually go ahead and take a look at what it takes to configure Django storages. First thing we do is if you'll look at the bottom where we have our installed apps, we have storages for Django storages set up just like any other third party app. Let's go ahead and jump to the bottom of our file and start some settings. First thing we need to do is set the default file storage. And we're going to set that to storages.backends.s3boto, s3boto storage. This uses the Boto library for our Amazon uploads. The great thing about Django Storages is you can actually configure it to use many other cloud services from Rackspace and Azure to, I think I saw one that does FTP. I don't know why. Moving right along, the next thing we need to do is we need to set our AWS credentials. These are just normal Bodo settings that you would deal with anyway. I have them being accessed through environment variables. And then finally, we need to set a bucket name. In this case, I'm doing GoJango episode 46. And you need to go ahead and make sure that exists on S3 before you actually start trying to do this because it will not create the bucket for you first. Same thing if you're going to use this with Azure. You need to create the container for it before you start using it. And now we're done. We, our settings are ready to go. So we'll start up our little server, jump into our browser and take a browse. We can actually start uploading a file, do our little cake logo, and then we're going to set our title, and then we're gonna do our description and submit. It was successful because it redirected back to the home page. That's what I set it with our form view template. And then if we go to the actual ID, we see that the image location is in Go Django episode 46.s3.amazon.com slash image da 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 da. So if we jump over to our S3 instance and look at our S3 console, we refresh the page, we see that we have an image folder. And when we look in our image folder, we have that image. So as you can see, it seamlessly works. You just change your default storage to the S3 Boto with storages, and poof, all your uploads go directly to Amazon S3. And then in your template, what you would do is you would just you would do the normal image.url to get back the URL, and it's the full Amazon URL. So that's all great and stuff, but we can actually take this a step further, and we can do our static files, such as our JavaScript as well. So if we'll ls our static folder, you'll see we have jQuery 1.11. And then if we go into our base template, we're loading static files at the very top. And then we'll go down to our JavaScript and we're calling the static template tag and we're passing it the jQuery file. We'll jump back into our settings, go to the bottom, and we need to set our static files storage to our S3 Boto storage, just like default file storage is. And that's it. Now we're ready to actually start using static files from 
Amazon S3. Just like in a normal production, we need to do a manage collect static. That's going to go through its normal process, and what it's going to do is it's uploading all of those files directly to Amazon S3 during the collect static process. We'll jump back into our browser, and if we'll open up Firebug now, look at our head. We have our static file of jQuery, and it's on Amazon S3 as well because we have the GoJango episode 46s3.amazonaws.com slash jQuery. And then if we'll also jump back over to our file explorer in S3 and we take a look at it, we have our admin and our images and our jQuery. So that shows that that was synced up as well. And that's really all there is to it uh, for, for changing the storage backend of your static files and where your files are uploaded. This is great for doing cloud hosting of your Django applications or if you just want to not worry about storing everything locally. It also makes setting up your static files much, much easier because you don't have to go through the nuances of some of the configuration settings. Please join us next time for our next episode. Thank you for watching and have a good rest of the day.